Hey, I am Elisa from The Naked and Famous, and you are watching Live in Limbo. Time is the medicine to heal these needs that only raise our voices higher, higher. Hi, my name is Connor. I'm here with Live in Limbo at the Danforth Music Hall, and I'm sitting here with Elisa from... The Naked and Famous. How are you? Hey, I'm doing very well, thank you. You're doing very well. Awesome. Great. So, uh, how long have you been in Canada? We arrived on our tour bus just this morning. Just this morning? We rolled oh, wow. in. Yeah, okay. we crossed the border in the in the night, and then we rolled in <laughs> this morning. Oh, okay, great. Um, and is this your first time in Canada for this tour, or...? Uh, no, we were actually in Canada about a week ago in Vancouver. Okay. Oh, yes. Um, but this time around, we're here in Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So, obviously, long way from home. Uh, you guys are f originally from New Zealand. Yeah, we're from um, New Zealand. And mm -hmm. are you still living in New Zealand? <laughs> or? No, I think wow. that would be logistically a logistical disaster oh, if okay. we were <laughs> flying back and forth to play shows. So, um, actually, the band, we all live in Los Angeles now. We, we now call that home. We've been stationed oh. there on and off for the past three years. Um, we moved the, moved there in 2012, first off living in a house together, and then eventually nice. acclimated to the new American culture, <laughs> driving on the other side of the world. So yeah, we, we uh, <laughs> Los Angeles is now home to all of us. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So you all live there together. Okay, I have I I have a dumb question. Okay, um, <laughs> give me a I, dumb question. I, I'm sorry. So uh, so New Zealanders. Um, you guys are known as Kiwis, right? Yeah. That's like the that's the term. Yeah. Now, uh, in in North America, as I'm sure you know, we have like kiwi fruit as well. Mm -hmm. Do they have kiwi in in New Zealand as yeah. well? Yes, yeah, they we do. Have an abundance Does that? Oh, fruit. okay. There is okay. So there's lots of them. Does that ever get confusing in conversation? <laughs> <laughs> is is there ever a time where like someone's like, oh, I'm gonna go pick up a kiwi, and you don't know if they're like getting a person or a fruit Cara, i think this is the first time i'm encountering this situation. yeah oh okay so this has never happened this to you before personally before. okay yeah personally <laughs> usually they like, yeah no no that's that's well, hilarious i noticed you called it a kiwi fruit yeah kiwi fruit kiwi fruit yeah we normally i guess just call it a kiwi so maybe like there's less confusion i don't know well we don't I really don't have know. either way it's, as many it's kiwis confusing. here but uh yeah i imagine that kind of would be um Okay, let's uh, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about something more serious and, or important, I guess. Uh, the new album. You guys just released a new album uh -huh. last month. Uh, Pretty yes. recently, well, yeah. Only three or three weeks ago. A couple weeks ago, yeah, mm -hmm. very recently. Um, and so now you guys are on tour supporting mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, so what? Uh, what were you when you were like writing that album? When you guys were putting that together, what were you? What were you listening to? What was inspiring you for that? God, I, it's always tough, because uh, it feels like such a long time now, like, it feels like two years ago, you know, this whole thing has been kind of building, and, right. anyway, um, what was I listening to? I, <laughs> I was listening to, actually, T Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, her, all right. Her record that came out in 2015 was right. incredible, and it actually sparked a lot of inspiration um, to everybody because pop music was kind of taking on this amazing um, new wave, you know, sonically, musically, and we just felt really inspired by pop music, and, you know, it was always an ambition of ours to make a pop record the most poppiest record, the most accessible record that we could make as the Naked and Famous. Sure. And I think we achieved that on Simple Forms. Oh, okay. So is that, I was, that was sort of, you sort of answered my follow-up question, but the, uh, what do you think is different then between this and the last and your previous albums? What so I, I think, guess this is more poppy. Yeah, what I think is different is that it's a lot more vocally, uh, vo vocals are more at the forefront, sonically, musically. Um, a lot of the songs are about, you know, wearing a heart on your sleeve it's all about that kind of stuff so i don't know it's just the most accessible thing we've ever done yeah it definitely seems like there's a lot of emotion running through the album i mean there's always going to be emotion running through Fair everything enough, we yeah. do but <laughs> it's just how we dress it is uh, a different story fair enough fair enough um so uh how did you get into music initially how did you first start into that um, uh, it's, it's always been something I've gravitated towards ever since I was a little kid. Okay. Um, 
I grew up in a family where we always had karaoke. So my family allowed, they were immigrants and they moved to New Zealand. And so I actually grew up listening to uh, Lao folk music. I didn't listen to English Western music in the house. And if there was English Western music in the house, it would be like Celine Dion, Mariah Carey, Boys to Men, Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, the my classics. dad, yeah, my dad <laughs> used to sing Mona Lisa um, by Nat King Cole to me all the time. So he was actually a singer in a band and I would often be hanging around him and his friends that would play music in the living room. So it was just something I was constantly around and I had an obsession with Mariah Carey when I was a kid. You know, I was obsessed because she was so different. She was like this biracial pop star. And, you know, I could, I could kind of identify with her because she was from a different ethnic background. She wasn't just another, you know, white pop star that we would see in the media all the time. And I just became so obsessed with her. And um, there's this n another artist from New Zealand who's called Bikrunga, and she's like part Malaysian, part Maori. And she really inspired me. Like seeing her being a singer songwriter really opened up my kind of um, world of possibility to be a singer. So it's just always been something I've wanted to do. And um, I stuck at it, and I'm glad I did. Yeah. Good, good. And so then in university you started, I guess, picking up some instruments, and, or was it before that? When did you before first start that, playing? I was about 13 years old and I started learning the guitar. My brother actually gave me my, my first guitar and I had this guitar teacher who was teaching me like Metallica licks. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> and then I had another one, I had another teacher that endeavoured to, that actually how I learned to read tablature was playing the Titanic theme song. All right. Um, so, <laughs> a slight departure yeah, from Metallica, but you know, know. it's good to have a vast repertoire. That guitar makes sense. teachers are funny because they teach you things that they think that you'd like. And it's just funny, <laughs> the things that I've learned from those teachers. No, so I was 13 years old, I learned how to play the guitar, and then I never chose music in school because I could never afford to um, bring an instrument to school. And so I ended up gravitating towards art. So I was always painting and stuff, but it wasn't until I left school I did this thing called a gap year which lots of right. Kiwis and Australians do and I don't know I figured out what I was the most passionate about was just asking myself what I wanted to do with my life I didn't want to go to university because I couldn't really afford to do that so I was like okay you know what I'm gonna try this music thing out I love to sing I love music I'm gonna go to music school and so I did mm. and I'm, that's where I met Aaron and Tom oh okay yeah Really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I've got a little uh, game, I guess, thing that I want to play. <laughs> I hope you'll bear with me on this. So, yeah, let's okay. Do it. So here's here's how it works. I'm gonna read you two news stories. Okay. Okay. One of them is real. One of them is it's fake. fake. Okay. <laughs> and you have to figure out which one is the fake one and which one is the real Truth one. Truth or fiction. Truth or fiction, because sometimes reality is stranger than real life. Or okay. than, than fiction. Yeah, reality stra is stranger, stranger than, than fiction. fiction. There we go. Yeah, that's right. Something like that. All right. So here we go. First story. A homeless Tennessee couple was found live, sleeping in a Walmart attic, living off of what they were able to steal from the store downstairs. The couple was discovered when patrons heard noises coming from the ceiling. Or, got another one, a hot yoga class in Melbourne was ev evacuated due to the outbreak of fire. <laughs> a fire, said one evacuated woman, that's hot yoga for you. <laughs> oh my God, you know what? Strange things always happen in America, so I wanna say the first one is true. The first one is true. All right, I have to say that you're wrong, unfortunately. No, it is uh, it is a fire in a Melbourne uh, oh hot yoga studio, which I, I don't know. I thought that was kind of ironic. I mean, obviously, and no one was hurt. But okay? wait, wait, think. did you think the Walmart story was, could be true? I had some suspicions, honestly. Yeah, like you say, there are some strange things that happen in America. I, I wouldn't put it past uh, America. <laughs> I would not at all. I would not at all. And uh, and Walmart is just one of those places where you get all kinds of types. So I almost got pickpocketed. Oh, well, these kids attempted really? to pickpocket me in a Walmart once. I went to Joshua Tree for a weekend getaway. And this Airbnb that I was staying in, it was awful. I had to go to Walmart and buy some new sheets. Anyway, I was determined to make it a great trip. But these kids approached me and they were looking at me and they were 
like, oh, we love your cardigan. And one of them was touching my cardigan. And then this other kid came up to me. He looked about maybe 10 or 11. He's like, can I give you a hug? I'm like, what is happening here? <laughs> there were about three of them just kind of oh, like wow. surrounding me. And I was like, mm, I'm good, thanks, guys. Have a good day. And I just kind of you know, ran off. Wow. I was like, those kids just tried to pickpocket me. <laughs> was this in a Walmart? This was in, in a, a Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> there so, you go. yeah, watch out yep. for the Walmart that, and Joshua Tree in California. Uh, <laughs> It's real, real stories from Yeah, that's from truth, Walmart. not fiction. All right, here we go. Here's, here's the second one. A study in the Journal of American Medical... Uh, sorry. A study in the Journal of the American Medical Association found a beneficial effect of electric fans in extreme heat. More specifically, they found that if you don't have air conditioning, fans are also pretty effective at keeping you cool. <laughs> or, we got another one. This one is from the Journal of Child Health. It found that children like candy. <laughs> the study went on to have the children rate the individual candy and surprisingly found that children pretty much like all candy. I mean, uh, <laughs> that one's going to be true. Which one is the true? The candy one. The candy one? Unfortunately, <laughs> it's the other one. There was a real study that was done oh in the God. Journal of American... What is this? I'm Journal losing this of game. American Medical Association of the Journal of Amer the American Medical Association that found that fans are effective at keeping a room wow. cool. There you go. I'm losing, go. but I'm learning. <laughs> Not being a sore loser, I'm learning. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Well, okay. are you really learning anything valuable? That's Some the real trivial question. trivial nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. Here's the last one. Um, there is a dating website for lovers of the company Apple called I Love. Their slogan is, find someone who loves you as much as you love your apple. <laughs> or, there is a dating website called Ugly Schmucks, and it is ex for exactly what you sounds for. What it sounds like it's for. There. Where did you find these questions? Where did you find them? <laughs> um, I want to say... I guarantee I only made up half of them. <laughs> the second one is true. The second one is true. The Ugly Schmucks dating website. No, wait. The first one's true. Is that your final answer? Final. You were right the Hammer first down. time. <laughs> oh, what? Ugly Schmucks is a dating oh, site, a real dating God. site for, I guess, people who don't believe that they're as attractive. So that's zero Losing. for three, unfortunately. Three for three. Zero <laughs> that, uh, points. That, uh, that's too bad. I'm really sorry about that. I'm so but, embarrassed. Uh, that's, yeah, well, and, you know, that's what they say. The truth is stranger than fiction. Wow. So, yeah. Anyways, it was really nice talking to you. I'm glad we got to sit down. Yeah, I hope you had fun. a good time. Uh, uh, yeah, good luck with everything. Thank good luck you. with your tour. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you very much. This was fun. I really enjoyed this. <laughs> good. Thank you. All right. <laughs>